just for reference of what the uh, information we're looking at is. And this is the spy. Let's go on a little bit bigger time frame and break it down. So here we got Corona again, and then now we got this new dip, and then we finally start grinding higher. Here is kind of the bigger trend line that we kind of shot way out of. And we've just been grinding higher, and we've formed this trend line right And these are weekly candles, so this is back from December 2020. Grind, 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 high, right? We spilled this mini trend line here, but at least we caught this one, right? And then here we got, you know, one retest, two, try to shoot above, fail, fail, and then we tried again, fail, and now we are, we got this candle, it looks very bad, very, very bad for the market. Now, we still have the potential to get bought off these next two days as of Thursday and Friday. Um, it's possible, but I think realistically the probability this does go to further or more to the downside is a lot more likely. We shall see what's happening, but yeah, go back to daily candles and you know, we got some spillover here, so it's definitely possible. But at least on these candles, we at least see some buying, right? Like this candle a little bit, and then today's candle, there is like no buying. And pretty bearish rejection. We do have a rejection back here, right? And back here, even here. So this looked really bad, but it's still somehow capped up. But yeah, definitely looks pretty bad. So here we got QQQ. We got this grind line back from March. Grind, 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 right? And then we go to here. Face some trouble since last November. Keep getting lower highs while consistently keeping a horizontal, somewhat horizontal resistance. Now, we broke that line and we also broke this trend line. So yesterday on the 118, we had that selling wake, the break of the actual trend line. However, did catch this. Today we had a attempt to reposition, you know, the, the price action above this trend line. It failed. And then it came down to retest this line. And then that was another failure. You can see though there was some buying along the line, actually. Very fascinating price action. This is not a coincidence. This is just a magic, you know. And a complete spillover, so very bearish. Could this still go higher? Of course. But I'm looking at these two candles saying, and I'm looking at the big picture going, you know, I think it's about time. And a retest of about, that's only like 8, 9%, maybe 10%. If, so that's like nothing. Um, I mean, realistically, it could go a lot farther down, but yeah, definitely possible, so think the market's time to, you know, get a little painful for some people. I think it's time. The Dow, I mean, we got a little shoot up, right? But we have to, we're in this like channel. It looks pretty strong. We got 340. It's not, it's not that extended compared to the other, um, you know, QQQ and the SBY. So I don't think the Dow's got too much downward. I mean, it's still good. Yeah, it doesn't have that much hurt than left in it, or in comparison, I meant um, the dollar index. I want to check this out really quick. What the heck is this chart doing here? Because it bugged out. What's happening to my chart? <laughs> uh, for some reason, a new chart formed and it's not appearing. So let's do Bitcoin. Bitcoin, yeah, that's... selling though um down to 40 percent let's go to crude crude still pumping hard that's a pretty good selling work today though but despite the market like the state of the market technically i think crude doesn't look that bad right now so i was actually debating buying some more crude and doing some trades i think like bp was one of them i was gonna add yeah it looks better than weekly so if we get this pull back to like 30 bucks it might be like uh you know just dump some money in it Gotta watch for earnings though, but yeah, but uh, Exxon is like carrying my portfolio right now. Like, I'm literally up like, uh, let's see, 80 something percent.
9% with like a tender 9% dividend that we've gotten did the way you know, one, two, three, four, yeah, at least at least a nine percent yield. So like it's been great. I mean, those of you who've been watching the channel for a while, we were really discussing this and I was like, Am I making a dumb decision? But it's kinda cool. I don't know, go back and uh, see like the decisions I made. But here's a theory I'm looking at like three K maybe. Probably three K is the support area. Definitely looks a little bit better than Bitcoin. Bitcoin looks like it's a mess. Gold and silver ripped up today. The portfolio moved so much. Finally seen some buying, but I'm still pretty bearish. Okay, I'm bullish, obviously, because I'm in the stocks, but I really need, I, I'm like indecisive until we see the break this line because this resistance has given us so much problems and I'm concerned that if we hit this again and it doesn't, and it spills over, like we might be going down to 16, 1700 like easily, so that's what I'm concerned about, at least in the short term. Um, very happy to see that we had a buying day, though. We know a lot of stocks, like even AEG, broke a resistance. Um, it's on great volume, too, so this is a mega resistance. Like mega from 2011. Seeing that is nice, but we do need to continue to see buying. Silver was up almost 3%, 2.99. Um, 24, 20. Looking great on some pretty good volume as well. It's been suppressed down here for a while, so good to see it finally getting back up. Apple down 2%. I think this has got a long way to go. Um, I think it's got a long way, so we'll see. Let's see, BGFV, oh, that actually didn't fall that much. Yeah, BP is the little margin. Corsair is set 20 bucks. It's, oh, that's a bearish wick, though. That means people sell on JDX and JDXJ. We finally broke this. We identified a 3150 pretty hefty resistance. You see, we got all this, like, attempting to break out and come down here. Then we finally got the push on good fall. It's up 7% today. Here's Turtle Beach. Wow, spilling over to 20 bucks. I mean, it was here, but wow. Higher robot. Did that. I like I like the story of this company, but I just am too skeptical to buy it. So, Kohl's was up mad today. 4.18%. I mean, this was looking spicy. I almost bought this. I guess getting really close. I think it's still a good value play, actually, which is surprising, but... I just, I don't know, I think I'd rather buy Foot Locker. Logitech spilling over, probably going back to 75, but watch this for a while. And NVIDIA, it's got a way to fall, but we got a little mini support here. Yeah, 250, that's where identified as a potential support. I'm watching, oh, I really want to pick this up for the portfolio. I think 60 bucks is like my price target, but yeah, right there. We'll see if it gets there, but I would love to own some old uh, Band American Silver looking great. We all got Rio too, yeah. And some space at nine bucks. Wow, this is, we were literally talking about this. If it hits nine, I might be buying it, but definitely not with the way the spy is looking and the queues. I'm not buying anything that I wouldn't be wanting to hold for at least a year or two right now. Um, I mean, actually, I did say oil. I was going to buy BP, but... I think oil's in a different space than the overall market. The commodities trade a little bit differently. But if one market does fall, it probably is going to have an impact on the others. But yeah, leaving space uh, out of here for now. Yeah, Tesla take two up 6% too. Really moving. Activision did get bought out yesterday by Microsoft. Really interesting. I don't know why. Being a little laggy today. Yeah, big selling wick at 165 though. And Walgreens, I think I would rather buy some Walgreens again. I, I, don't, I was being dumb. I had it here, then I sold it, and then it fell. And then like, I don't know. The company seems pretty great. It's just, um, it's just a, it's just a big value player now. Uh, definitely like it, but I didn't like it uh, a couple months ago because I didn't know enough about the company and where, why I was in the portfolio. But I do. We do kind of want to scan some stuff, but what I, I want to, 
that's what I want to do. I want to scan my in might invest. I need to see something. Apple ASO. I don't think I would. I think ASO is more of a trade. Caterpillar would be nice to buy eventually, but expensive. Uh, CCJ already got Clorox possibly. I think 150 was my price target. Disney. Uh, I actually uh, sold Disney. Um, I think like down here is like 150. And like, here's the thing. I feel like I'm I'm so just indecisive with this company. I love it, but I don't. And I love the company. I hate the stock. And I just, you know, I still had like a 15% gain. And I mean, it was like 40% at one point. But I was like, I did the valuation for myself on Disney, like from an optimistic point of view, stretching it to five years based on my assumptions of subscriber growth with like their platforms as well as like a revenue increase of their parks and my optimistic like very optimistic four years from now was like it put the, the price of disney at 140 and i was like i, I can't own this in the portfolio and i i thought about it for a while and then i just not a while maybe like two weeks and i just sold it and it was so relieving but i would love to buy disney again lower but I just really did not want to have that in the portfolio, like, just was, did not make the portfolio look good, EM, EMX, I'm taking off there, they're not doing too hot right now, Jade, Trump Dynamics, Google would love to buy some Goog, J, J possibly, I'm gonna add Walgreens and Kohl's to the list, just in case, KL, we actually do have it, did it rip up, but yeah, JP Morgan would be nice, and we are finally seeing some selling. Look at that little pattern right there. Phew, that's a, yeah, it's a bad pattern, but we'd love to see this lower. Um, I don't know what price to be honest, but lower the lower the better. <laughs> JP Morgan at 120, that would be so spicy. That's that to drop 20% though. But it's already dropped like 10% from the reason I but Oh, JP Morgan at that trend line would be so crispy. That's gonna drop like 35%. It could though, like easily. Kinda curious. Let's say, uh, I should've done that. Let's say it drops to 120 and they got a dollar dividend. So for, uh, I should probably be able to do this on my own, but let's just do this. Four divided by 120, am I doing that right? No, I'm dumb. Um, Four divided by one twenty. You can do this. It's a three point three dividend, so that's not too bad, right? Not too bad. It would be nice to have a bank in the portfolio. So I really want a bank. I want to read. I want some more small cap companies. I don't know why space is in here for investing. I'm not gonna invest in that. I'm sorry. TD Bank. Yeah, that does. This seemed like a buy was so long ago that I never bought it. Oh yeah, UBA, I forgot about this company. Um, I feel like I gotta I gotta fix this list around there's so many companies that I that I should have in here that I don't. I think I don't know Caterpillar, actually Caterpillar would be just nice to own. Actually, no, I've never done an analysis on Caterpillar. Um hold on a second now. I'm forgetting all the stocks that I want to buy. Logitech possibly. Uh, take out North Rock We already got Lockheed Proctor Campbell. Could be nice. I do gotta analyze the company a little bit more. Let's see from a technical perspective though. Under back under 100 bucks would be crispy. Is this a trend line we got here? That could be a trend line. That's such a very sharp trend line. I forgot what happened that day. Why well, I highlighted it, but yeah. Oh wow, I have my alert down here. That must have been from years ago. Pepsi, wow, wow, Pepsi really ripped up. This thing is so expensive, like Pepsi, uh hey, where are my thingies? I don't know, I had, I, it's like over a thirty B on Pepsi. Why? And then you're getting these growth companies that are under like fifteen. This is really like, this market's so weird, it's gotta shift a little bit eventually. And I think we already are seeing some of the rotation, as you can see by the increase in the gold miners. But we'll see. Uh, but for more investments, I mean, I have my list, but I feel like there are so many other things that I could potentially want. But I, again, I don't want my list to be that big. Because then, you know, I'm 
just like, I gotta buy everything, and I don't have the money for locker that was on the list. We got some stock, and it's, it just seems great. There's some downsides, obviously, but Foot Locker just seems like a good value play right now for a small cap company. Or it's like a mid cap, but it's still pretty small compared to other things. It seems like people are rushing into the more value play, quote value, because we they got things like um, Procter Gamble up 3%. Um, I mean, I even Kimberly Clark was up today a little bit. Target. What is this? CrowdStrike, a Walmart is up a percent. I mean, not a lot, but in a day where the market's taking that dive, people are just rushing to other, quote, more stable assets. Costco dropped a lot, dude. This thing is so expensive. I, it already dropped 13%, but, like, this thing could very easily drop more. It is so expensive, and I get it's a good company, but why would you buy who's, I don't get who's buying this for value, though. I mean, maybe they don't really care, but I don't know, man. I don't know. It's expensive. 50 50 expensive, but I guess, you know, expensive is, again, um, based on the individual, what you deem to be expensive, but... All uh, 3M's probably breaking to the downside. We got earnings soon, though. So we have, like, a similar pattern. We're kind of back here, so... Choo -choo. But it's whatever. I'm, I actually... You know, I, I got 3M, obviously, and I like the company. I've had it for, like, I think, actually, years now before COVID, like, yeah, so almost two years, maybe, no, maybe even, no, three, 2019, wow, um, what was I gonna say, yeah, I, I think the company's actually pretty good and everything, but, like, like, I like the company and the products and stuff, but, like, when I break down the financials, I'm like, this thing looks expensive, like, I actually don't think it's that good of a buy, like, um, like, I wouldn't buy more, even if it dropped to maybe, maybe, like, below 130, but, like, you know, the PE's kind of high, they don't, they're not increasing, yeah, because they're not increasing their revenue that rapidly, their net income, I mean, their dividend's already pretty high, they have a lot of debt, like, I don't know, it just doesn't seem like that good of a buy, and even though I have it now, like, I'm up, I'm at 154, so, I mean, maybe we're up, like, 16%, I don't know, but I mean, we got dividend stuff, but I'm actually debating, though. No, I, I hate to do that, but, like, I don't know. I could very easily buy something cheaper right now and just exchange all the, the money I have in this, and it's like, do I do that, or I just say, you know, just don't worry about it. I've been doing that for now. Like, I'm like, don't worry about it. Who cares? Um, I mean, it was up more at one point, actually. At one point, we were up, like... 30%, but like, again, I didn't buy for the capital appreciation, I bought it because the yield, and it's a very stable company paying for a while, but it's expensive, like, it's expensive, so, and just because they paid it on years doesn't mean that they're going to continue to do so, like, I'm looking at their free cash flow, looking at their uh, dividend sale paid out, and it's getting pretty high for payout ratio, so, and they're not growing, like, at all, they haven't grown in, like, five years or three or four years like the revenue has been basically one two percent maybe growth so like the bear ratio is gonna get higher I, I don't know it's just not looking too good um so i can just buy something else out anyway that just why why did we get the 3m i don't remember typing it in but we, we got the 3m what is this stock oh mcdonald's too mcdonald's would be nice but like man they um I do not like their how their finance financials look, but I do got I gotta look at Procter Gamble. But yeah, I'm looking at Owen Stag for REITs, but like I don't know, they just seem a little expensive. Definitely, if they do drop the like Stag, if uh, I don't want to say this, but if Stag does get to like thirty bucks, I mean that's a big drop, but that'd be so spicy. I mean, I'm obviously happy with oh, it's sixty. Realistically, 55 would be super spicy. Oh, dropping 20%. If it does get to 60, what would the yield be? So we got 0.2465 times 12, because they pay a lot divided by, if we do 60, it'd be almost a 5% yield. 2.95, oops. I think that was it. Divided by, if we hit 55, that'd be a 5.3. 
I'd be happy with a 5% yield starting it. Oh, so it's just hard. I don't know how to really value these companies like realistically. So um, it's, it's tough, but I do want to read in the portfolio and uh, actually this is to the, yeah. This is actually a beautiful head and shoulders. Look at that. Boom, boom, boom. That's a beautiful head and shoulders right there if I've ever seen one. Let's actually take this off and you can see it better. Yeah, that does not surprise me. If it did fall, I mean, it doesn't have to, but that's a head and shoulders. Probabilities, probabilities. Smith & Weston might be a, I mean, I, I'm already out. I'm, I'm down like 25% in this, but I think they got some potential, so. Got this some potential. Kind of just scanning around for some other stuff really quick. Oh, uranium might be buying some more eventually. I mean, I'm talking like I got mad money here to spend, but yeah. Just trying to pick some stuff for again. This thing finally, you trip quadruple you. I like this company. Don't love it, but I like it. But yeah, we finally we, we broke seven bucks, which is not too hot. So let's identify six. Six bucks is the next potential. I mean, hopefully it's like I'm at like seven forty-five is my price. So like I'm actually down a lot. This thing's volatile though, but yeah. Anyway, store capital could be another one to potentially buy, but squall, look at squall. Where? Wow, down we got cut in half. More than half. Simon Property could be another one. I Man, my friend, he's up like 130%. No dividends included. Like, it's, it's insane. So jelly, I didn't take that, that risk with them. I mean, uh, yeah, I, I didn't want to take it, but... Nah, I kind of wish I did. Oh, surprising right here. Look at that. Price action. I have to write this down. So I'm doing something with uh, these patterns. Hold on, a Q. Just 2022. I should write that. Yep, that's uh, that's breaking down. If I've ever seen it. Market pulling back. Anyway, I'm just gonna wrap it up really quick. I think we got a lot of room to the downside. Oh, this is Microsoft. I forgot I'm boring this. Look at that wick too. A lot of people selling. Wow, we're at the trend line from COVID. Microsoft could break this. These things are just too expensive. I don't know. I think the market's got to roll over. If we, if we go back to our original point, this is what we're looking at. That looks grim. That looks bad. Probably go down, down. So it doesn't have to, but if I had to you know, make a bet on it, I'd say it's probably going down. But anyway, stay safe out there, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully, if you're interested in buying some stuff, you know, maybe the market go down, you pick up some stuff at the price you want. If not, maybe go higher. But eventually, the game's got to, it's got to go to the other side. Money's got to roll.